Hey there, I don't know about you, but here in my area in Utah, every single time I look, grocery prices just keep getting higher and higher on me. So I thought it might be helpful today to show you five different dinners that you can make for only about $5 each. I really do hope this helps with your grocery budget this week and let's go get to cooking. We're starting today off by making this vegetable quiche, and while we're at Walmart, I do want to show you some of the products that I picked up. I first grabbed this yellow onion for only about 68 cents a pound, and I do want to let you know, if you're on a budget, always go for those yellow onions. Don't buy a white onion, because typically at my grocery stores, white onions are about double the price, and yellow onions have more antioxidants in them, so they are healthier. But next, I'm going to be grabbing a green bell pepper. Green bell peppers are normally the least expensive bell peppers at my store because they're considered to be a little bit less mature than the red ones, the yellow ones, and the orange ones. Now going over to the egg area, I'm going to be picking up a dozen eggs. You only need about nine eggs for this recipe, but you can't just buy nine eggs. So I grabbed my dozen eggs for $2.39. I can't believe the price on eggs these days. I remember when eggs were only about a dollar a couple years ago, so it's just crazy to me. The last thing I'm picking up is some pre-made pie crust. I am going for the Great Value brand because it is significantly cheaper. Over to my cutting board, I'm going to dice up our bell pepper. I am also going to be dicing up half of our onion into smaller pieces. I'm only using half of that onion. I'm not using the full onion because I'm going to be using the other half for a future recipe. Now into this big bowl, I'm going to be cracking our nine eggs in there right now. Now that we have all of our eggs in the bowl, I tossed in a third a cup of water or you could use milk, but of course water is a little bit more budget friendly. Then I added in our seasonings, a teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, half a teaspoon of chili flakes, then a teaspoon of salt and pepper. All of those seasonings really make this recipe. I gave this a really good whisk and then I tossed in our bell pepper and our onion and I gave this a stir. I have my pie dish right here. I'm going to be spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray. And then the cool thing about these pre-made pie crusts is that they come with two pie crusts in the little box. So we're only going to be using one of those pie crusts for this recipe. We're going to be using the other pie crust for a pot pie here in a moment. But I placed that pie crust down at the bottom of my pie pan and then I poured that egg mixture right in there. This is gonna bake in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes or until the egg has set. Here's what it looks like out of the oven. Quiches are so, so great to make when you're on a budget for breakfast, lunches, or dinners. And quiches are wonderful because you could really personalize them and make them your own. By adding ingredients or subtracting ingredients, you could add bacon, sausage, or different veggies. Now we're starting on our vegetable pot pie. The first ingredient we're going to be needing for this recipe is a yellow onion. We're actually just going to be using the other half of the yellow onion that we used for the quiche. We're also going to be using the second pie crust in this box. Now I'm going to be grabbing a container of mushrooms. You see these pre-sliced mushrooms are $2.10 for eight ounces, whereas this eight ounce container of non-pre-sliced mushrooms is only $1.98. So slice your mushrooms or Yourself, you'll save quite a bit of money. And then the last ingredient I'm grabbing is a bag of frozen mixed vegetables for under a dollar. Now, like I said before, slicing your mushrooms yourself will save you money. So to get this recipe started, we sliced up our eight ounces of mushrooms. Now over to the pan on my stove, I have about two tablespoons of hot olive oil in there. I added my mushrooms and I cooked them for about two minutes. After two minutes of cooking, I added in our half of a yellow onion that I diced and I continued to let this cook for an additional five to seven minutes or until those onions were completely soft. 
Now we'll be tossing in our 12 ounce bag of frozen mixed vegetables. Give this a stir and let this cook together for a couple of minutes until those veggies are no longer frozen. Next, we're going to be adding in a 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup. If you don't care for cream of mushroom, you could always add in cream of chicken or cream of celery as a substitute. I gave this a stir and then I tossed in our seasonings, a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and then a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper and then a teaspoon of dried thyme. I gave this a really good stir. I brought our pot pie filling over to my pie pan that I sprayed with nonstick spray. I added that right in there, then I spread it out as even as possible. Over to the top of this pot pie filling, you are going to add your second pie crust and then kind of press it down. And then the very last thing you will do is cut about three slits over the top of the pie crust. This is going to help the pot pie so it doesn't overflow in the oven. This baked on 375 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes or until it was golden brown. This pot pie has extremely great, rich, bold flavor. And if you wanted to make this a chicken pot pie, all you have to do is add cooked shredded chicken to this recipe. But this is amazing and it is so budget friendly. It definitely doesn't taste budget friendly, which is another plus. We love this one in the fall and in the winter. Now we're making this sausage tomato pasta. So the first thing that we're grabbing for this recipe is a pound of this breakfast sausage, or you could use Italian sausage, but this breakfast sausage was the best price at my store. I only ended up using a half a pound of that sausage. Next, we're going to be grabbing Italian style petite diced tomatoes for under a dollar. You really can't go wrong with this can. It has amazing, great flavor in it. The last thing I'm going to be grabbing for under 50 cents is a box of macaroni and cheese. This is going to be very filling and it adds quite a bit of flavor to your recipe. To my pot of boiling water, I added in our box of mac and cheese and I cooked it according to the box instructions. While I had that cooking away over to the pan on my stove, I added in a half a pound of our sausage. I broke that sausage up and I cooked it through. Once our sausage was cooked through, I removed any grease in the pan. Then I added in our cooked strained noodles. I'm also going to be adding in our can of petite diced tomatoes at this point, along with the cheese packet from the box of mac and cheese. Then for the seasonings, you could add in any type of seasonings you like, but I added in a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and then about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Give this a stir and let this simmer all together on the stove for about five to seven minutes. Stir it occasionally. Here's the finished product. I sprinkled the top of mine with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and fresh parsley that I had on hand. And this is one of those recipes that you can't knock until you try. I know you might be judging this one, but seriously, it is so good and flavorful. It really is wonderful if you're on a budget. Now we're making these lentil sloppy joes. We actually had these over at a friend's house a little while ago and I've been thinking about them since. To begin, I grabbed our hamburger buns. Next, you're going to be grabbing your pound of lentils. I just grabbed these lentils. They're super rich in fiber and potassium. They're great for your heart and they're really high in protein. So to begin, I added two cups of our lentils into my over the sink strainer. I do have this over the sink strainer link in the description box below the video if you want to get yourself one but I'm going to be rinsing our lentils with cold water just because sometimes there's a little bit of dirt on them or you know whatever they're kind of like beans but now I'm going to be adding our lentils to my large pot over the stove you're also going to be adding four cups of water right in there bring this to a simmer and let this simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes Now that my lentils are tender, I strain them and I set them to the side. 
Over to the pan on my stove, I added in about two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil was hot, I added my half of a yellow onion that I diced. Give this a dash of salt and pepper and then let the onion get soft. It took about three to five minutes. And then once the onion was soft, you're going to be adding in your tomato sauce. This is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. You're also going to be adding in about half a cup of water. I just added the water to the can just to get out any excess tomato sauce that was in the can. And then about two tablespoons of soy sauce, your brown sugar, which is two tablespoons of that, two teaspoons of pepper a teaspoon of cumin, and then a teaspoon of chili powder. I gave this a really good stir. Add in your cooked strained lentils, give this a really good stir, and I let this simmer for about seven to 10 minutes on my stove. I did stir it occasionally. I also added in a dash more salt and pepper, and then it was ready to serve. I serve these in a hamburger bun and what we like to do is pour a little bit of barbecue sauce over the top of the lentils before we eat them. They're just extra, extra good like that. And then I also serve these with some grapes that I had on hand and a bag of chips that I also had on hand. This recipe is so, so good. Now we're making these classic tacos and the first ingredient that we'll be using is a box of crunchy taco shells. This box comes with 12 taco shells, which is a lot. I didn't even use all those taco shells for this specific recipe, which is great. The next ingredient I grabbed was this little can of refried beans. And then I am using turkey for the meat. You could always make this meatless or you could um, add ground beef, ground chicken, really whatever type of meat you like. And I only used about a half a pound of that turkey. Over here in my pan, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil. To the oil, I added a half a yellow onion that I diced, and then I added our half a pound of ground turkey. I broke the ground turkey up and I started cooking it. I have my meat masher right here. I'm breaking that ground turkey up with. If you don't have a meat masher like this, I definitely recommend one. I have it in my Amazon store for you, but to the ground turkey, I seasoned it with two tablespoons of taco seasoning, and I continued to cook the turkey through at this point. Once our turkey was cooked through, I added in a third a cup of water along with a little bit more taco seasoning and our can of refried beans. I gave this a stir, I let the refried beans warm through, and then I took it off the stove. I have our box of taco shells right here. You're going to be filling them up with that taco mixture and placing them into your nine by 13 baking dish. I do like placing our taco shells like standing up in the baking dish. I just think it makes it a little bit easier. This is optional, but I did sprinkle the top of the tacos with a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese that I had on hand. These baked in a preheated oven to 325 degrees for about seven to 10 minutes, and here's the finished product. These tacos are so, so good alone. You really don't have to serve them with anything, but I did have some tomatoes, guacamole, and sour cream on hand. These were so, so delicious. I hope you found a dinner for yourself today and I have so many more budget-friendly dinner videos like this on my channel. So make sure you subscribe down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.